Well, today's the 3rd of April, 2014, and thought I'd show you some of my garden. Got some nice daffodils all over the place, and and now it's definitely be, it's going to be spring soon, or it is spring already here in Germany. Very early this year, much earlier than usual. Today is a special day because I got some mail. Uh, the mail should have been here a long time ago actually, but um, the postman doesn't come around all the time. He says, he says, uh, oh, he says I'm just too weird. So he didn't bring it around till today. Um, a letter. And looking at the address, it's from ein, ein gewisser Herrn Stefan Reins, who those who love and fear him know him better as Cutworm 59, our very own Cutworm. Um, I don't own any guns. I don't want to go into that, but it seemed like there's got to be some special way to open a letter from our friend, Mr. Cutworm. Um, it occurred to me that, to the best of my memory, which is no longer really very good, no one has used this particular method for opening a uh, a letter with a, uh, pres presumably there is not a bomb in it, but a uh, sticker. Although a bomb is altogether possible, um, this particular method of opening seemed appropriate. Uh, so I went into the barn, or the shed, and uh, I got my, my trusty old, very old steel saw out. However, when I got it out, I realized I don't have any mix for it, any gasoline uh, oil mix. So I considered mixing some up, and then I thought, oh, well, for one letter, mm, it is, of course, cutworm. But then I realized I have a better alternative, or a simpler alternative anyway. I also have an electric chainsaw. And it doesn't need any gasoline. So I'm gonna just put the I'm just gonna put this this letter here down on the table here and give it a go here. Well that was pretty tough. Tough letter. But, oh, and look what I've done. I'm a bad aim with a, with a chainsaw. I opened it in the bottom rather than the top. Well, that's okay. Oh my goodness, what's in here? Oh, a Confederate two do, 200 or $2 bill. Oh, a $2 bill, a Confederate $2 bill. Well, okay. I'll use that the next time uh, I'm in the con Confederacy. Then there's here uh, uh, some service stickers. Service stickers. I guess you can see them. For a Crosley. Crosleys are one of Mr. Cutworm's passions. Say one of them. We'll talk about some more a little later. And here is his sticker, which we're going to put up with the others when we finally do get them to put up. A very nice note from Steve.
He tells me he loves me, and God bless, and I appreciate that very much. Steve is, for all the joking, he's a wonderful gentleman, a very fine man, and someone who I'm really pleased and honored to be able to call a friend. He's been putting up YouTube videos for about three years. For a long time, well, except for the very first video in which he got in trouble with his wife. Um, well, I won't say any more about that. Uh, he, many of his videos were about his, as I said, one of his passions, which are Crosley cars, little American-made cars that um, he has gathered a number of together and is rebuilding. Um, he has an army truck that he's built up to in his own style. And he is a, uh, an impassioned gun person and gunsmith. Recently, he decided to go British got himself a Spitfire, which was in rather desolate condition and which he has put into driving condition now. And he's working on the steering uh, uh, differential or steering um, a universal joint right at the moment, among other things. He's also, uh, in the last months, uh, bought himself a couple of Morris Miners, which he's rebuilding. He seems prone to accidents, which isn't too surprising, although the accidents that he's had have nothing to do with his guns or explosives, but rather with uh, other people's bad driving. And we all wish him, of course, a complete recovery as much as that's possible from his accident. And finally, Steve has an accomplice and her name is Shirley Jean, and she's about as cute as they come. So that's my, my mail call for the day. Cutworm59, most of you are probably already subscribed, have already subscribed to him. If you haven't, check him out, do it. He's a wonderful mechanic, he does wonderful work, and he's really fun. And as I said, a very I'm very proud to have him as a as a friend. He's one of the uh, people who in the garage gang has been around a while and is loved and and um, watched by many, many members. Well, as long as I'm out here and have the camera and it's a, still a relatively nice day, I thought I'd show you a few scenes from, the, uh, from our garden as spring comes upon us here. The, Willow trees are beginning to bloom, uh, are beginning to uh, turn green, as you can see here, the little tiny leaves forming on the branches. We'll go around and look at some of the other plants that are, that are uh, beginning to show signs of, of um, springtime. Oh, I turned the autofocus off here. Now I have to put that back on again. Or I can focus by manually, I guess. There we are, yeah. So I focus that manually, and that's a forsythia that's blooming. Normally they don't bloom until uh, mid-April or end of April, and it already started in the, in the middle of uh, March, as I showed you, I think, in my last video. This is our tallest tree. I'm guessing it's around 
60 feet tall. Up in the top there's a nest. We've been watching the magpies build their nest up in there and it's always fun to see them uh, jumping around in the yard here gathering up little sticks to build their nest out of. The tree is a tamarack or larch and if you're not familiar with these trees they're needle trees of course but they are they lose their needles in the in the winter and become barren and this tree is just now starting to get its needles back. I'm going to take you up close and show you some of the needles how how they're being formed. Here you can see some of the little bundles of needles being formed. They're only about um, a quarter of an inch, perhaps, long at the moment. And here you can see a cone. Of course, it's a conifer, and the conifers have cones. The cones are quite small. They're only about, an, no, not even an inch in diameter, I guess. I'm focusing by hand here. I hope that's all right. Yeah, there it is. Because the autofocus wants to focus in the background. So that's our large tree. There are some of the branches. And I get very irritated with them when I'm sitting on my mower mowing the grass here. But I let them because they look nice. Oh, here in the foreground is a pear tree that's already starting to bloom and in the background an ornamental cherry and over here an apple tree that's also whoops I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to turn on the uh, automatic focus again an apple tree that's starting to bloom as well all right, we'll walk around a little bit and see what else there is to, to see here. Well, here is certainly the biggest surprise of all. Our asparagus is already coming up in the beginning of April. This is very surprising. We don't have asparagus usually until May. Look at those nice stalks of asparagus there. There's some over there in the corner too there. Look at that. Look at that. Oh boy. I can hardly wait. <laughs> it's going to be for a couple of weeks yet until we can harvest any. But we will and then uh, we'll be enjoying the asparagus with bacon perhaps. We like to wrap it with bacon and put it in the oven. And uh, it's asparagus is wonderful. In Germany, mostly uh, people have white asparagus, which is grown underground, it never sees daylight. Um, we, it's a lot of work to, to grow. It's very wonderful and we can buy wonderful white asparagus. So we uh, have a patch of green asparagus here. And um, Karen did a great deal of work, I have to say, planting this. She put, um, uh, she dug out ditches uh, two feet deep and almost two feet wide and filled them with sandy soil and planted the, the, the roots of the asparagus plants in them. So there we are, asparagus in the beginning of April. It's going to be a good year, I believe. Thanks for watching. Bye.